The hypotenuse leg or HL theorem is useful. This theorem is really a derivation of the side angle side postulate, just as the HA theorem is a derivation of the angle side angle postulate. In this lesson, you will learn about the hypotenuse leg HL theorem. Use the HL theorem to prove congruence in right triangles and apply that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Let's get started. This lesson will introduce a very long phrase, abbreviated CPCTC. CPCTC is an acronym for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Here are two congruent right triangles, triangle PAT and triangle JOG. Notice the hash marks for the two acute interior angles, the hash marks for the three sides of each triangle and the squares in the right angles. Every part of one triangle is congruent to every matching or corresponding part of the other triangle. CPCTC reminds us that if two triangles are congruent, then every corresponding part of one triangle is congruent to the other. The converse of this, of course, is that if every corresponding part of two triangles are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. The HL theorem helps you prove this statement. Recall the side angle side or SAS postulate used to prove congruence of two triangles if you know congruent sides, an included congruent angle, and another congruent pair of sides. The included angle must be sandwiched between the sides. The hypotenuse leg theorem or HL theorem tells us a similar story. The HL theorem states, if the hypotenuse and one leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and one leg of another right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. But wait, this theorem only talks about two legs and doesn't even mention an angle. That's because every right triangle has one given right angle of 90 degrees. And if we can somehow manage to squeeze that right angle between the hypotenuse and another leg, then we would be in great shape. But of course, you can't do that because the hypotenuse of a right triangle is always opposite the right angle. So, what do we do? Well, we have to be very mathematically clever and enlist the aid of a different type of triangle. To prove that two right triangles are congruent if their corresponding hypotenuses and one leg are congruent, we start with an isosceles triangle. Here we have isosceles triangle JAK. We know by definition that JA is congruent to JK because they are legs. We are about to turn those legs into hypotenuses of two right triangles by constructing an altitude from side AK. The altitude of a triangle is a line perpendicular to the base, passing through the opposite angle. Label its point on AK as point C. That altitude, JC, complies with the isosceles triangle theorem, which makes the perpendicular bisector of the base the angle bisector of the vertex angle. We have two right angles at point C, angle JCA and angle JCK. We have two right triangles, triangle JAC and triangle JCK, sharing side JC. We know by the reflexive property that side JC of triangle JAC is congruent to JC of triangle JKC. And we know that the two hypotenuses, which began our proof as equal length legs of an isosceles triangle, are congruent. So now we have one leg and a hypotenuse of triangle JAC congruent to the corresponding leg and hypotenuse of triangle JCK. Now, Verify that AC is congruent to CK and all the interior angles are congruent. AC is congruent to CK because the altitude of the base of an isosceles triangle bisects the base, since it is by definition the perpendicular bisector. Angle JCA is congruent to angle JCK because they are both right angles. Angle A is congruent to angle K because they were angles opposite to the legs in accordance with the isosceles triangle theorem. Angle AJC is congruent to angle CJK, 
because side JC was the angle bisector of original angle AJK. So, all three interior angles of each right triangle are congruent, and all sides are congruent. CPCTC. We originally used the isosceles triangle to find the hypotenuse and a single leg congruent, and from that, we built proof that both triangles are congruent. You have now proven the HL theorem and can use it confidently now.